serial killer David Berkowitz terrorized New York City in the 70s with his seemingly random murders, leaving behind a long and twisted legacy. Netflix's new series, The Sons of Sam, has drawn renewed interest in Berkowitz and his crimes. This is the untold truth of the murderer known as the Son of Sam. It's been more than 40 years since the Son of Sam terrorized New York City. The reason his name still inspires fear and unease is because of the atmosphere in New York at the time and the way he approached the business of serial murder. As noted by the New York Daily News, in 1976, New York City was in grim shape. It had seen 1,800 murders in 1975 alone, and economically, it was in shambles. And then the devastating blackout of 1977 would bring chaos to New York. David Berkowitz, a lonely, mentally unstable young man, lived alone in Yonkers. Delusional and violent, he was tormented by the urge to hurt people, especially women. Beginning in 1976, he began giving in to those urges and killed five women and one man over the course of 12 months. His victims were Donna Loria, Christine Friend, Virginia Voskarichian, Valentina Suriani, Alexander Esau, and Stacey Moskowitz. The seemingly casually random attacks, combined with the terrifying name Son of Sam, sent the city into a panic. There was a sense that anyone could be shot to death anywhere at any time. David Berkowitz was one of those chatty serial killers who enjoyed spreading fear and tormenting the police. During his year-long rampage, Berkowitz left rambling, deranged letters at the scenes of several of his crimes and sent letters to the police and to journalists, offering bizarre pronouncements and terrifying details. As the investigation stretched on for weeks and months, a real sense of panic settled on the city. When one of Berkowitz's victims was killed when leaving a Queen's disco, people stopped going out to restaurants and nightclubs. When the fact that Berkowitz targeted young women with long, dark hair was publicized, it resulted in a spike in wig sales as women scrambled to avoid Son of Sam's preferred victim profile. When wigs weren't an option, many women opted to cut their hair or simply dye it in order to feel safe. When David Berkowitz was arrested for the Son of Sam murders on August 10, 1977, it seemed very clear that these horrific crimes were the work of a single, deranged individual. Berkowitz was found with the murder weapon in his possession, confessed to the crimes almost immediately, and offered zero alternative explanations to the evidence against him. However, some people don't think Berkowitz acted alone. Journalist Maury Terry published a book in 1987 that claimed Berkowitz was part of a larger cult, and that there were other Sons of Sam out there who were never caught. As New York Magazine explains, Terry believes Berkowitz suffered from crushing loneliness and an invitation to take part in a ceremony with the Process Church of the Final Judgment. A satanic cult that had connections to Charles Manson brought him into their clutches. Berkowitz supposedly leaned into the cult pretty hard, engaging in arson and animal sacrifice and eventually committing murders on the cult's orders. Several people suspected to have been a part of the cult died mysteriously shortly after Berkowitz's arrest. And even one of the district attorney working the case in 1977 believed Berkowitz acted with partners. Some believe the police pushed the lone gunman theory because they feared the city was on the edge of total panic and wanted to close the case quickly. So why did a man called David name himself Son of Sam? Berkowitz was initially called the 44 caliber killer by the press due to the ammunition he used in the killings. But Berkowitz received his new name after leaving a rambling letter behind with one of his victims in which he wrote in part, I am a monster. I am the Son of Sam. Sam loves to drink blood. Go out and kill, commands Father Sam. Things got even stranger when Berkowitz was arrested. In explaining the name, Berkowitz claimed that Sam was the name of a 6,000-year-old spirit possessing a neighbor's dog. According to Berkowitz, Sam commanded him to kill, communicating through the dog. This explanation did not exactly make anyone feel better, though. Berkowitz later retracted the story and admitted he'd made it up. He claimed he was trying to ruin a deal his former lawyers were putting together for a book and film about his crimes, and in the hopes of convincing court-appointed psychiatrists that he was unfit to stand trial, which he almost succeeded in doing. David Berkowitz was more than just a killer. He was a one-man wrecking crew apparently determined to destroy the city he called home. 
For years, someone had been setting fires in the Bronx in New York City in untended brush, in abandoned cars, even in empty buildings. And there's reportedly reason to believe the arsonist dubbed the Phantom of the Bronx was actually Berkowitz. When police arrested Berkowitz for the Son of Sam murders, they also searched his apartment and recovered several diaries that the killer kept. The diaries were key pieces of evidence at his trial for the six murders he committed, but they also kept detailed records of fires he set, the weather conditions, and firebox numbers. The diaries detail more than 1,400 fires Berkowitz is suspected of starting, and he may have been responsible for as many as 2,000 blazes before switching his energies to murder. Ironically, Berkowitz was at one point a volunteer fireman in New York City as well. There's perhaps no better place to get firearm training than in the United States military, which is exactly what David Berkowitz did. Six years before he killed his first victim, Berkowitz enlisted in the Army. The Washington Post reports that Berkowitz joined up on June 23, 1971, and served three years, including a one-year assignment in South Korea. His record is mixed. On the one hand, he qualified as a sharpshooter on the M16 rifle and was described as an excellent marksman by superiors, who had no way of knowing how he would apply those skills in the coming years. He also earned two awards, the National Defense Service Medal and the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal. On the other hand, he was demoted to private first class while serving in South Korea when he did a poor job working with a convoy, though he was later promoted back to his previous rank. He was given an honorable discharge in 1974. David Berkowitz was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. However, since his incarceration, Berkowitz has reportedly changed. The serial killer has converted to Christianity and traded the name Son of Sam for Son of Hope. Not only does he blame his crimes on his interest in the occult and his decision to serve Satan, but he ministers to his fellow inmates. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, that, that was not me. The transformation is even more dramatic than you think. New York Magazine reports that Berkowitz believes he's literally battling Satan and believes he has the advantage because he's so well-versed in Satan's tricks. In fact, Berkowitz has become a cult figure for certain Christians who view him as the ultimate proof that even the worst, most evil people can be saved. They believe God and Satan are literally fighting over Berkowitz's soul and regard him as a kind of apostle or modern prophet. David Berkowitz's life before his killing spree is the story of a man with no friends and little social contact. So it's no surprise that Berkowitz loved the attention he received as the notorious Son of Sam, even if he had to enjoy it in secret. He reveled in the attention and did everything he could to make it last, sending letters that expertly churned the news cycle. This need for attention didn't end when he was arrested, either. Berkowitz gave interviews, and several publishers and newspapers had plans to pay exorbitant amounts for exclusive interviews or book deals. He was a hot property, and there was every reason to believe he would be amenable to those offers, since he continued to enjoy the attention from prison. However, Rolling Stone reports that the threat of Berkowitz getting rich from the murder of six innocent people prompted the New York State Legislature to pass the so-called Son of Sam law. This prohibited criminals from profiting from their crimes. Several other states have followed suit with similar laws, and it can all be traced back to Berkowitz. It's undeniable that the Summer of Sam changed how the press treated criminals. In fact, the tabloid newspapers in New York City engaged in a battle of sensationalism over the serial killer. Headlines screamed out every new development, and the newspapers battled for every scrap of new information and drove some dangerous rumors. The papers received lots of horrified criticism, but they sold a lot of copies. Even after Berkowitz's arrest, the tabloids continued to milk the case in ways that had never been done before. Reporters were arrested breaking into Berkowitz's apartment, hoping to ransack it for story fodder. The New York Post published love letters a younger Berkowitz had written to an old girlfriend. The tabloid coverage of the murders elevated Berkowitz and, in some ways, made him the legend he is today instead of a violent footnote. The story irrevocably changed how the press approached sensational events in the future. It took the New York City Police Department a year to catch David Berkowitz. This wasn't because he was an evil genius, it was because the NYPD and the entire city was in rough shape. 
1975 had been a nearly disastrous year for New York City, a year in which it came about as close to bankruptcy as a city can get without actually collapsing. The city had to resort to some pretty severe measures to keep the lights on, including massive rounds of layoffs of city employees, including thousands of police officers. Battered by budget cuts and layoffs, the NYPD simply wasn't equipped to deal with a serial killer, and many mistakes were made. The sketches of the killer the police prepared from survivors of Berkowitz's attacks were laughably bad and looked absolutely nothing like the killer. I don't think that picture looked anything like him. And while the tabloid newspapers made Son of Sam out to be a nightmarish force of evil, the sporadic nature of his crimes made him very difficult to catch. With the underfunded and understaffed NYPD struggling and the whole city reeling in terror, it's conceivable that David Berkowitz could have gone on killing people for much longer. What ultimately stopped him was his own behavior. Berkowitz had a habit of harassing his neighbors, including writing threatening, anonymous letters which matched the tone and style of the letters Son of Sam sent to the newspapers. He even shot a neighbor's dog using the same gun he used to murder his victims. It was almost as if Berkowitz was daring the universe to catch him. All of this had made Berkowitz a person of interest in the investigation, but the police had no hard evidence. So when a woman who lived near the site of Berkowitz's final murder remembered seeing a car receiving a parking ticket shortly before the murder, the police checked Berkowitz's registration information against parking tickets. Amazingly, he'd used his own car, a 1970 Ford Galaxy, to drive to and from his murders. The police quickly moved to arrest him, and he confessed shortly after. David Berkowitz entered an insanity plea at first, and he was examined by several court-appointed psychiatrists in an attempt to determine whether he was fit to stand trial. I hate that name, I despise that name. That, Which name? That moniker, Son of Sam. But when the trial officially began, Berkowitz changed his tune and pleaded guilty to all six murders. He admitted that he'd invented the Son of Sam identity and seemed to have every intention of selling his story to publishers and filmmakers for huge sums. Psychiatric professionals today believe Berkowitz enjoyed the fame and the power he had to terrorize the city, and that he purposefully created the Son of Sam legend to promote himself. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about infamous crimes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.